a small disclaimer. This isn't gonna be a tutorial where I will show you how to make any of these particular effects that you can see right now in the intro, but rather I will show you the technique that I used to achieve each of these effects. Let's say a setup that allows you to achieve each of these effects fairly simple. So just bear that in mind and if you want to grab and dissect each of those scenes that you're seeing in the intro, then they will be available on my Gumroad. Link for that in the description. So refraction. I think it's both underrated and amazing. And today I'm gonna show you how using it can be super easy and at the same time give you really cool results. I mean, don't tell me that this doesn't look amazing. As always, the effect is fully procedural and it may use some particles and some force fields. So let's get right into it. First, let's open a scene in Blender and delete everything. And because our effect is based on refraction, so refracting the light hitting the object, we will need to set up the HDRI first. So jump into the shading tab change from object to world so that we edit the world and here add an environment texture. Now open the HDRI and switch into the shading view. This HDRI that I have is from Polyheaven, a uh, link for it is in the description but you can use any that you want. You may just have a slightly different result if you decide to use another HDRI. Also if you don't know how to preview the node that you just created, you have to have a node wrangler enabled, go to edit preferences and here search for node wrangler make sure that it's on and then simply click ctrl shift and then left mouse button on the node that you want to preview and it will either directly plug it into world output or it will cre create this viewer node that will then go into the output either way it's an easy way to preview whatever you're working on so now that we have this hdri we also want to make it pitch black so that it's gonna be easier for us to see what we're working on so add a mix rgb node and a light path node now connect this hdri to one input of the mix rgb and then light path is camera ray goes to the factor and then the second color is whatever the background color you want to have and then the result of the mix rgb goes into the background color and this goes to the output and now as you change the second color this is gonna be your background color of your scene but at the same time the hdri that's in the background still lights up our scene so with this setup let's go back to the layout tab and create our object. Uh, I recommend either plane or UV sphere. The decision is yours, depending on what kind of particle you want to have, what you want to work with. Now let's drag in another viewport and change it to shader editor. Click N to hide this ribbon and click new to create new material and delete the BSDF. And now what we need is refraction BSDF, actually three of them. So we just copy them over and first let's change their colors. So click here, then switch to RGB. And then the first one is going to be red, green and blue zero. The second one green and the third third one blue. Now we need to add them all together. So look for add shader node. So add the red with the green and then one more the result with the blue. Now we can switch to render preview here and see what our shader does so far. As you can see it's now reflecting the HDRI that we're having installed and that's perfect. But now to make it more colorful and rainbowy like we can play with this IOR value which is index of refraction. If you want to know more about it you can just google the term index of refraction and there is a bunch of documents on how the light refracts on different objects if you're going for a specific look but all you have to know for this tutorial is that this value sort of separates the color that is here from the two others so if we move this slider you can see that the red is being sort of separated uh, kind of like a chromatic aberration effect so just make sure that the IOR on each of these three refraction BSDF uh, is slightly different uh, 1.2 1.3 and 1.4 right and now let's give it a little bit of transparency so let's add a emission and transparent BSDF and they mix shader connected like so transparent on top emission on the bottom and then the factor is gonna be the mask that we will create right now so let's make a little bit more space in here and add a shader to rgb node and let's get the result from the refraction to the shader to rgb which is gonna conveniently convert the shader to a color so we can actually work with it let's add a color ramp right after and now we can use this as our mask so as you drag the slider in the black values are gonna be transparent you can also switch the interpolation from linear to B spline to have much softer gradient so maybe something like this so let's plug this to our mix shader factor and then the shader to RGB let's also plug it to the emission so that we have the same colors but we can control how emissive they are so in case you're going for some 
sparkling shiny particles then you can control it via the emission strength and with this done we can directly preview the mix shader and as you can see it's still much opaque and that is because we need to go to the material properties and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend and this already gives us this really really nice refractive result now let's name this sphere and also we can add another mesh to see how it looks like on different geometry so for example plane in the shader editor here from the drop down list just choose the material that we just created and it will apply it to the plane and then as you rotate the camera you should have this effect showing only on the certain angles. Now let's create a mesh that's gonna be our particle emitter. So I chose sphere but you can choose whatever. Move it a little bit upwards and go into the particle properties and click the plus button to add a particle system. Now first of all go to the render tab and change render as from halo to object and then in the instance object choose whichever particle you want to spawn then change the scale to one which basically means that the particle spawned will be one to one ratio with whatever particle you chose now let's click play to see whether it works and everything seems fine so far of course it looks terrible but that's what we're gonna fix right now and first of all let's turn off the gravity you can either do it uh, in the scene properties to turn off the gravity to the whole scene or as a ginger dog mentioned under uh, one of my previous videos you can do it directly in the particle system just scroll down until you find the field weights tab and then just bring the gravity all the way to zero and that basically means that these particles are not going to be affected by gravity at all now let's select the particle emitter let's also maybe give it a proper name and scale it up quite a lot now because this is a particle emitter we don't really care for the geometry we don't really want to look at it and in order to hide it and not hide the particles at the same time you have to go into the modifiers tab and then add modifier mask and that will hide just the geometry but when you click play then you can see that the particles are still visible as you can see now they are getting spawned but the first problem that we can uh, observe is that not only each particle looks exactly the same but also as you move the camera they all act like a one big organism and they refract in the same way and that may not be what you're going for and it's easily fixable through the shader so let's select our particle and then in the shader editor behind the refraction bsdf let's add a mapping node now connect the mapping vector to the refraction normal all three of them and then add texture coordinates and now plug generated to the vector which is gonna alter uh, what is being refracted in the particle before that you could clearly see what you're looking at like you could identify whatever is being refracted but when you plug the texture coordinates and thanks to it the, the refractions are getting much more distorted so it's harder to tell what you're actually looking at and you just have this cool color effects but now in order to make each bubble unique we have to add a object info math value and combine xyz now change the math from add to multiply plug in object info random into one slot and then the value in another and then the result of the multiply goes into the combine xyz z value the x and the y you can leave as one and then plug the combine xyz output into the mapping rotation now as you increase the value you can see that the particles have way more variation and they look way more unique than before and with all that done the shader is basically finished now one more thing we can do is add another layer of complexity that some of you may find useful so let's bring in a noise texture then switch it from 3d to 4d and then let's copy this node setup object info value and math node shift d put it right here and then the result of it goes to the w value which is the seed we also want to have a different seed value for each particle and then let's plug the mapping node to the noise texture and add a mix rgb node now here let's plug mapping node vector to one color and then noise texture to another change the mix to linear light and this way if you preview it you can see that we are distorting the texture coordinates let's bring it a little bit lower something really really soft and then you can plug this result into the refraction normal instead of our mapping node and now if we go preview the mix shader you can see that the result we got is really interesting not sure what you could use it for but i'm sure some of you can find creative application for it so it's just there if you need it and if you don't want to use it then simply just bring the factor of linear light all the way down and you have the original texture coordinates but i will bring it a little bit maybe something like 0.1 and then you can also control the scale of the noise etc and this would conclude the whole shader work so now the rest is just playing with the particle systems and applying some forces so for this example i will use the particles from the soap bubbles but i will use the forces that were used in the particle explosion so first of all let's make this particle much smaller because right now it's a little bit too big go to the emitter the particle settings and first of all let's make the frame start minus 50 because the lifetime of our particle is 50 so i want to give it enough warm-up time so that when we start on frame one we already have some particles to work with then the end 
and also to the last frame of our animation in my case it's 250 now another thing is let's go to source and change the emit from from faces to volume so that we have these particles emitted from inside the ball and not just on the outer border and then i want them to appear and disappear more naturally because right now they just pop in and out of existence so let's scroll all the way down until the texture tab and here let's just click new and then go into the texture tab here change the type from image or movie to blend then in the influence uncheck general type Time and check size because we want this texture to only affect the size the scale of our particles lower in mapping change the coordinates from generated to strand particle and as you can see we already have some effect going on now scroll all the way down into colors then check color ramp open the tab and bring the alpha value to one so that we see the gradient that we're working on and you can treat this basically like a lifetime of the particle so here would be the particle appearing and here would be the particle depth and here on the scale you're setting up what will be the size of the particle so we want it to start at black so zero and then go to one and then stay one until near the depth of the particle then set it to one and then one more at the end and set it to black so it also just scales down before it disappears i think it makes for a smoother transition overall now let's go back to the particle system settings go to the rotation enable it and then bring randomize all the way up to give it that much more of a randomness and now let's create empty plane axis and here in this tab let's add a force field to it now as you can see the particles immediately start to behave differently if this force doesn't affect your particles immediately then try to open this list and click force or switch from force to wind and then back to force again because sometimes it doesn't work out of the box now before we go any further let's also make some small adjustments in the shader tab change from object to world and here in this mix rgb node let's change this color from this grayish to pitch black so that we have a nicer contrast with the background and we see what we're actually working on it's just a preference you can leave it as whatever you want now this next step is actually a pure playground for you because there's just so many different options that you can choose from and so many different results that you can achieve with just this simple setup just bear in mind that there is just so much room for experimentation but just for demonstration purposes i will try to show you one example of what you can get with this setup so first of all let's also go back to the emitter particle systems and then open physics tab and change the mass to something smaller like 0.3 kilograms that will make those bubbles much much lighter and more reactive to the forces that we're gonna apply and also down in the render tab let's bring in a little bit of scale randomness so that not all the bubbles look the same and now let's go into our force field and and change the flow to 1 and also strength to something like minus 20 which will cause the particles to flow into our force field now let's bring it a little bit up sort of in the middle of the emitter and now the emitter itself let's scale it way 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 bigger and also in the particle settings let's give it slightly more particles to spawn so maybe like 2000 and now as you can see we've literally just few clicks super simple we have this sort of energy gathering uh, effect already now we can manipulate it play with the values or even play with the shader to get some more dynamism of these particles so for example this part that controls the rotation of our texture coordinates we can just animate this value simply give it a driver so type in hashtag frame divided by let's say five and that will cause the particles to rotate as they fly inwards which i think is really great really simple and kind of effortless right now to just play with some values and get totally different result like for example we can change the force to let's say vortex and then of course with much much smaller strength we can get this really really uh, cool swirly thingies and all that is gonna be cool with any particles but i think that thanks to this refraction shader it makes it that much cooler so that will be all for what I prepared for you today. And again, uh, all the previous scenes that you've seen in the intro are available on my Gumroad uh, for free. So check it out there, link in the description. And also please share with me your creative projects because so far it's been really great. I mean, uh, some of you guys shared with me that like Sonic animation and it just really feels great to see that, you know, the videos I'm doing have an actual impact and some people are actually doing really amazing things with it. So please keep doing that. Keep sending me your work on Twitter. I really check all that and really appreciate it. So till the next one. Bye bye.